The cliche is that everyone hates Mondays. Well, you know, it's not called going to play, it's called going to work. Well, what if you didn't hate your job for all the usual reasons, but instead because it seemed like at these random moments everything would get all turned around on you? You'd be doing your job and everything would be going fine, and then all of a sudden everything would be distinctly not fine. Things would happen that made no sense at all, and then suddenly you would be in trouble, and you wouldn't even know why. That's what it was like for at least one undiagnosed autistic guy. to dress for the job you want, not the job you have. I guess I must want to be an entry-level insurance sales representative. Hello friends! Welcome to Mr. Snail's Wild Ride. I am Mr. Snail, and the wild ride is my life so far. One recurring theme in my videos could be described as the if only I had known motif. Since I wasn't diagnosed until I was 39, as I've said, I spent a good deal of time in the dark about how disconnected and weird I felt. I haven't really talked about autism in the workplace, partly because I haven't had a job in a long time, but also mostly because all of the jobs I did have were in the period of my life before I'd been diagnosed. So I didn't know how to deal with sensory overload, I didn't really know what sensory overload was, I felt overwhelmed a lot for some reason, and I didn't know what I needed in order to ask for it. At every job, periodically something would happen and I'd find myself in trouble all of a sudden, and I almost never saw it coming. I often felt if I just had a chance to explain, we could have cleared the whole thing up. But I never did have that chance to explain. It always happened too fast and would have taken too long and nobody would have understood me. So I just had to purse my lips and keep my mouth shut, and then later on I would let out my frustrations by either crying or I'd put my fist through some drywall or both. One of the longest jobs I had was as a legal secretary. It was actually very cool. It was a big firm, but they worked normal business hours, almost never had any court dates to speak of, casual dress, everybody was really cool. In many ways, it was a dream job. The main reason I'm not still there is because the firm closed. So I mostly did document management for one attorney and two paralegals. It had already been made public that the firm was going to be closing by the end of the year, and there were some people that had already left and sought jobs at other firms. So things were especially slow by the late morning and I was really exhausted, partly from boredom, but also partly because I was always exhausted at work. And I looked up, and my paralegal's office was dark, and the door was open. I somehow thought it was a good idea to take a nap in there. I was just going to take a really short nap. I set the alarm on my phone for 10 minutes. That's all I needed, I thought, was just 10 minutes. So I went in when the coast was clear, and I quietly, carefully closed the door. I was just going to lay down behind her desk, take a very short, and then all of a sudden the door opened and it was actually an attorney. And not just any attorney, the attorney that I worked for. And she, of course, wanted to know what I was doing. And I acted like I was just dropping off some documents. And she, of course, wanted to know why the door was closed. I don't even remember what I said. Because A, I'm a horrible liar, so it's not like I had anything planned. And B, I told a lie. So whatever it was, I don't remember it. I was very, very lucky that I didn't get fired right on the spot for doing something really bizarre or potentially illegal or God only knows what else. For the record, this is not one of those times when I had no idea why I was in trouble. I knew that I was in trouble and I knew why. I was a dumbass. But as I said, it does bring up one universal truth about all the jobs I've had. I was always tired. And I didn't know what my problem was, why I was always tired. If I had known what my problem was, if I'd known that I had autism, I would have been able to plan ahead to try to do something about it, to try to cope with the circumstances before things got out of hand. Like the way I do now. I can tell when I'm feeling overwhelmed or overloaded, and so I can try to do something about it. I can try to extricate myself from the situation, or respond in some other way, try to take care of myself before things go too far and I melt down, explode, or do something crazy. The Americans with Disabilities Act has been around for a long time now, 25 years. Businesses have had a lot of time now to adjust to the various requirements and get used to the idea of making reasonable accommodations for people. And that's starting to include people on the autism spectrum as well. People who historically have had a very difficult time making the transition from school to the workplace. In fact, some companies have begun to actively recruit autistic new hires for special projects for which they're particularly well suited. Things that require uh, intense focus, prolonged attention to detail, things like that. So times are changing. It's not necessarily career suicide to talk to your boss about making some modifications to your work environment to be more hospitable to you. And likewise, so you can be more hospitable to everybody else around you. And likely, more productive too. I'll talk about some specific strategies for dealing with workplace stress at a later time. For now though, if you have any questions, feel free to message me or leave your questions in the comments section below. Don't forget to please push like on this video and subscribe for new episodes every week. So until then, stay tuned! What if you didn't hate your job for all the usual reasons, but instead, because once in a while it seemed like the, the, the <laughs> if only I had known motif. You know, since I wasn't described until I was, wasn't described.
I spent a good deal of my life in the dark about all the weirdness and disconnectedness. <laughs> well, what if you didn't hate your job for all the usual reasons, but because once in a while you'd be sitting there on and all the blah, 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 begun actively recruiting autistic people? <laughs> message me or to leave those questions in the description below. The description! But instead, because once in a while something would come along and turn everything all ass backward around. <laughs>